We are demonstrating today just a little tip on setting, fine setting your propeller kind of the, uh, the old way. And so what we've done is we put the hub on, we put the three blades on, and then the squash plate, we stuck that on, and we're, gonna, we're just walking through how we torque it up and sit, do the final trim setting so that it's very smooth. Recently, in the last maybe 10 years, the propeller company has come out with uh, a washer which has little ridges on it. I don't know if you can see the ridges, but this little washer uh, fits on the bolt for the prop and to hold the hub on. And then there's, uh, you'd think they would need a lock type, but instead they use a Never Seize product. And they, you put a little bit of Never Seize on there and then you tighten up the prop bolts which are these bolts right here and they have these washers which you can see right here and that usually holds those uh, bolts that they never undo but it's always good to check them every every 20 hours once you cut your you cut your little piece of, uh, of uh, material Right uh, there? Right up. You cut this piece so it's exactly the same. So you're setting with your trailing edge and obviously that sets your leading edge for the exact pitch. When you do that on all three blades, your propeller will run very smoothly. There are pitch settings that you can use which are up here, but these are a guideline more than anything. These, uh, these settings here they're all props have all the sentinic props have these mar indicator markings for setting your blades but the best way to, to actually do it is to come out to your tip because this is where all the air passes and then you just measure from a fixed point over so that you get the exact distance between here and here and I'll tell you that will make your your airboat your doesn't matter whether it's a three blade or four blade or even a two blade if they're all set the same you're gonna have one smooth running propeller that's for sure and I'm just trying to get a, another angle here just so you can see if this little piece of aluminum is cut right so that it fits on both sides to a fixed place here and the trailing edge that's how you set your leading edge to be always consistent for all three blades and if they're all lining up then you've got it and uh, and you know you've got your your pitch set perfectly and if your if your propeller has any slack in it like this see that going back and forth that just goes to show you you need to tighten up your upper spool and just to bring that so that there's no more play in it. When you put a new blade on, usually you'll have to adjust it once or twice uh, before it's ready to go out. And, uh, and then you have your setting. The belt's had a chance to uh, align and align on the spool. And also, it'll just uh, it'll be all set. And then you probably won't have to set it for you know 40 or 50 if hours. You just take and move the tip of the propeller if it'll go back and forth like this, you'll see the belt underneath there is also moving just a little bit as you do this. And so that's the signal that, that means that you have to adjust with these bolts here. You'll take all of those bolts out and then you rotate this until the belt gets tight. And usually you only have to go one bolt hole and your propeller won't move either way. You go to adjust it and it just won't go. But with this much uh, slack in your belt, it's best to uh, make your adjustment. It's after hours, but we're setting this blade here. We just put the three paddles into the main hub and we're just setting the distance uh, that we know to be true just with a piece of aluminum fill rod we just put it here and we know that this blade is real close and right so we set the all three blades we run the next blade to the same position and we set the three blades exactly the same so that they are 
uh, there will be no vibration. And once you know your max RPM, just index them with a little kind of a feeler gauge and uh, just set your blades that way. There's other marks that you have right up here, but these are only indicators, really. What, what is the final setting is whatever doesn't have vibration. If these are out for some reason, you won't be out if you're setting your tip. And this is where all the wind comes from to drive your boat from here to here, believe it or not. The rest, yeah, it blows, but this is really what's creating your, your real power. Yeah, see, they're dead in line. As long as they're, you know, that tight, you're within a millimeter, and that'll give you a nice soft no vibration in your blade and if you want a different pitch setting this can be longer or shorter but it's still an indicator this forms a set position then you put your blade directly level with that and then you put this thing straight out from that so that you're you got three constants that you you know are always the same and if the distance is always the same then your trailing edge is going to be dusting that air at exactly the right spot and that's how you really set a blade so that she's she's soft no vibration best results doesn't matter what the little marks say here in the end this is what tells it all this is an old torque wrench something you'd see out of the 60s and 70s you know but it works i've never had it in 25 years i've never had a propeller come loose on me so you just use a torque wrench usually the modern tick tick ones 65 foot pounds and you go across kind of in a triangular shape and you just suck that blade on real nice and tight yeah so we just torque them in a kind of a triangular pattern just a little bit at a time and that squash plate comes right in there real nice and uh, straight and we just keep doing that until the uh, the torque on this hits 65 foot-pounds and that blade should be good. We'll double check it later, but it should be good at that point. And then you run the boat right up to, you know, maximum RPM and see what your, your limitations are. And that's, you know, if you run your engine around 5,400, you're probably going to last longer than if you're running into the 6,000 RPM range. And you can set it all by your propeller. Yeah, we, uh, we will be tightening the bolts roughly 20 foot pounds at a time, you know, like in a triangular pattern like this you know, continuously, and then we go up another 20 pounds and another 20 pounds and finish off at 65 foot-pounds with the torque wrench. Once that propeller is set, you, you turn up your RPM, uh, you know, let your engine warm up, and then you basically, with your truck hooked to the trailer, you, uh, you know, where the boat's tied down, then you power it right up and you see what kind of RPM you can get out of it. And if it's in that 5,500 uh, RPM, it's probably about where you'd want to leave it, especially to break in your engine on a new airboat. So that's the way I would advise to uh, go about doing your final setting on your propeller. And as you know, the job's never done until you look for every tool, every nut, every bolt, because when you fire up that engine, and if a bolt comes off of the top of the engine and goes through the propeller, it'll also probably go right through your radiator like a 22 shell. Now here's a propeller that did just that. You'll see that it entered here and came out there. Now these are normally repairable if it only hits one side. But when it goes right through, that's called FOD, foreign object damage. If it breaks this side and this side, the manufacturer will not fix the blade. But if it only goes through just the one side, it is repairable 99% of the time, but it has to be okayed by the uh, manufacturer, which in this case is Sentinic. We're dealers for Sentinic, and we've been using their blades for a long time, and I think they're some of the finest blades in the world, um, if not the best. And they've improved to these our series blades which have a curved leading edge which works better for lowering the sound and that so this is what the inside of a propeller hub looks like propeller blade that fits in the hub and that's what that hub is there and when you tighten it up it compresses 
a longer distance than if these were just straight. So it holds them in a solid position. And uh, I've never had one go out of, uh, out of range at that 65 foot-pounds of torque.